Moderna is one of the top trending stocks on the Yahoo Finance site this morning, up nearly 9% here in the pre-market on news that it has entered into the phase three trial of its COVID-19 vaccine. Now, this means it's going to start to give participants doses. The trial is expected to enroll up to 30,000 people. It's being conducted in partnership with the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases. For more now, we are joined by the CEO of Moderna, Stefan Bansell, as well as Yahoo who finances health reporter Anjali Kamlani. Uh, good morning to you both. And Stefan, thanks for being with us this morning. Uh, what do you um, hope these results in phase three will yield? Will it mean that uh, this vaccine is safe to be used perhaps in the next few months? Yes, so good morning and thank you again for having me. So indeed the phase three for a vaccine is a typical last clinical trial. It's a very large one, you know, 30,000 people. 15,000 will receive the vaccine, 15,000 will receive placebo, and we're going to be able to see through uh, the data what's the safety of a vaccine. So it's a very large database of safety. And what is the efficacy of a vaccine? The FDA has set a bar at 50% efficacy. So it's very clear for everybody what has to be achieved. And what we started to do this morning is to those participants in several states in the US, uh, we have up to uh, around 100 clinical sites set up mostly where we have a lot of infections right now. And so what we're hoping is potentially as early as October, maybe November, it's difficult to anticipate the infection rate, but given the high infection rate in the in seven states right now, it is possible that we have data of efficacy uh, in October or November. Stefan, that's very exciting news, especially when we're looking for at least some indication that a vaccine will come to light. Obviously, Moderna ahead of the scale there. But looking at the funding part of it, you got an additional $472 million from BARDA uh, to help with this trial. Without that, uh, you wouldn't be able to do as, as robust a trial, correct? That's correct. If you look at uh, back in April when we got the first BARDA grant for $483 million, at the time, we were thinking of a trial of 10,000 participants. And then through the spring, as we discussed with the FDA and the NIH, Dr. Fauci's team, uh, it became uh, apparent that given the exposure of a US citizen that could happen with an approved vaccine to ensure safety, which of course is very important for the FDA and for a sponsor company like Moderna, that 30,000 was the right size to do the, the clinical trial. And so, as you can imagine, it was much more expensive to run a 30,000 trial than 10,000. And so the supplement that was signed over the weekend is actually enabled us to do and to fund entirely the 30,000 trial participants. And so with all of that going on, you also have so much when it comes to interest from uh, investors and interest from a lot of different avenues. We know that even Lonza has been approached by other companies uh, to try and help with their production. So you have a lot going on right now uh, for a company that is really in the limelight right now. Are there any things that you have maybe seen as lessons learned or, or anything that, that has occurred that you're really you know, taking that lesson forward with you right now? I mean, the piece, if you ask me, uh, that I've been the most surprised and impressed through the last six months, because, you know, we started racing this virus back in January, in the first days of January, is the extraordinary collaboration from the U.S. government, you know, with Dr. Fauci's team, with the FDA. Sometimes we have, you know, two or three dialogue in the same day. Everybody has been coming together to help fight this virus. And you know, I've been in this business for 25 years. I've never seen this level of cooperation, collaboration, and dialogue that has allowed us to move so fast without ever compromising safety. That has been very important for everybody. We have taken a lot of business risk. So we spend a lot of money at risk, sometimes more than a shoulder money, sometimes taxpayer money through BADA to take a lot of risk. I mean, think about it now. Where we've raised $1.3 billion in May to start making the vaccine at risk. So as we speak, we have our teams at Moderna and the team at Lonza that are making vaccine for commercial use. We don't have a phase three data. We just started a phase three today. So it just tells you the extraordinary effort the industry and the government are doing together. So that if the vaccine works, which we should know in the fall, 
uh, we can make it available for millions and millions of Americans right away. Stefan, I did want to ask you about the uh, your some of your stock sales. Seventy two thousand shares sold through July sixteenth. Uh, I understand a lot of these sales were prearranged, but what do you tell lawmakers down in D.C. who who are criticizing uh, sales like this and saying, you know what, uh, Moderna and, and many other biotech companies are profiting off the pandemic? Yeah, so those uh, sales were done through you know ten B five plans. Uh, I can't talk personally. I mean, those plans were initially set up in December 2018 when we went public. Uh, we had put, because I wanted to be very clear to investors, we had put a, a 12 month burn, which the sales could not happen for the first 12 months. Uh, and so, by policy, those plans are actually not cancelable now. Uh, we are in a, in a blackout period of a company. Uh, and because of that, Nobody can start a new plan, can amend a plan, or can stop a plan that is against policy. Because as you know, when the SEC set up those plans, they did that you know, years ago so that you know, executives could not benefit from insider information. And so given there's so much data, like our non-human primate monkey data that not being public, the data in the elderly, the elderly is not available yet to the public. So, so we only... Uh, sell stocks through plans that were set up a long time ago when none of us even knew what SARS-CoV-2 or COVID-19 was. Stefan, just to follow up on that, you know, it's commonplace for those plans to be amended over time. Can you share with us the last time those stock plans were amended for your company? And do you have any plans or are you free to buy any more stock in Moderna in the near term? So because of a blackout period we are in, I cannot change a plan to buy or to sell stock. All those things are forbidden to me or to any of the executives or board members. What I can tell you is that, you know, 99% of my wealth is tied up in the Moderna stock. So I'm very aligned with any of our shareholders. Uh, and if you also look at it, um, because of the stock options that have been awarded to me by the board over the years, actually, despite the stocks that my plans have sold uh, earlier this year, uh, I had more stock in June 30th than I had on January 1st. Uh, so if you look at it, this was just a bit of liquidity that I set up at the time of the IPO uh, because you know the company has been private for nine years. Uh, I actually was the only investor in the world that has bought stock with cash at the same terms of any other investor in every other private round. The A round, the B round, the C round, the D round, the E round, the F round, and the G round, I bought stock in every round. Uh, and so uh, if any investors is worried they are not aligned with me, they should look at the numbers. We are extremely aligned. Stefan, one final question for you. Looking at uh, the way that a, lo a lot of the larger sort of vaccine legacy companies are acting, uh, saying uh, pretty loudly that, you know, vaccines aren't typically a profitable avenue, that going to be possibly your first product out on the market and all of this rush um, really of support behind it. Uh, does that play a role in, in how you plan to price because there's so much taxpayer money, you've got a lot of investment? How does that uh, answer the question of, you know, pricing and, and going forward? With the, with the provision of uh, vaccine doses? Yes, that's a great question. And that's one that we're spending a lot of time thinking about trying to be very balanced and very responsible. We have said before, we have to make a profit out of the first product we sold because we have invested $2 billion of our shareholder capital since we started the company. The company has never made a profit. And as I said, we raised another $1.3 billion of equity capital in May that is going to make product at risk, assuming the product is successful. And so we need to get a return. We are highly aware that this is a pandemic uh, and that we need to be very, very responsible how we price the product. We've said before, we will price the product within the range of vaccines already approved. Uh, and we're gonna be most probably provide a, a discount for the pandemic phase, as Dr. Fauci has said, uh, this virus is not going away. So we believe there will be a market in the endemic phase in a couple of years when the pandemic is over. But for the pandemic phase, the healthcare crisis we're all facing right now will provide a discount to uh, the selling price. And we're trying to be very, very uh, careful and sensitive about it because it's really important that everybody 
who wants a vaccine is able to afford the vaccine. That is very important to all of us at the company.